Hello everyone, in today's KSP video we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to build and fly the Soyuz spacecraft and rocket. So hopefully this is going to be a pretty good video, hopefully you get something out of it, or you just are entertained. So either way, let's get let's get straight into the construction of this rocket um, and the spacecraft, right? So uh, one of the big pitches I wanted to make about this video, I want to be like a quick way to make it, like an easy, fast Soyuz. So uh, this is by no means the best Soyuz that's ever been made, but it's an easy Soyuz that I'm pretty sure everyone can make, and the uh, Making History DLC is required for this ability. If you are wondering. So to start off, we're going to be taking some of those circular um, Russian modules, taking them, go upside down um, for flip it upside down, put a docking port on top for the orbit module, a decoupler, and then you want to put a normal one for the descent module. Going to put a parachute in here that you're going to just go ahead and clip in the middle. Want to make sure you get it as close to the middle as possible um, because there is a retro rocket that has to fire and that needs to fire and the thing needs to be going basically as straight up as possible for that to work as, as best as possible. So uh, that is why that has to be like that. I'm going to go get a 1.875 meter heat shield to go at the bottom. And then to build the descent module, which if you don't know, it's kind of like a, like a, it's like a, it's circular on top and then it's kind of straight down at the bottom. It's kind of weird, but you'll kind of see the shape I'm making right now. So I'm going to get some radiators, get it to eight way symmetry. And then we're going to do something along those lines, basically like that to do the, to do the descent module. Um, and then just heat shield, we're putting there right there initially just to kind of get a gauge of the scale. And then we're going to be removing that heat shield in just a second so we can add the retro rocket. So the way the Soyuz works is it descends mainly on parachutes all the way down the one singular parachute. But then there are some retro rockets that fire just a fraction of a second before the thing touches the ground, which will give it a little bit of a kick to help slow the, the vehicle down just before the thing touches to help kind of cushion the impact. So I'm going to go ahead and use a Sepatron for that. We're going to try and get it as flat as possible on the bottom side of the... Um, bottom side of the descent module. So this is going to be fired after the heat shield is kind of staged away. And then we're going to go ahead and try and clip that up into the uh, into the thing. Uh, just making sure the bell is not completely covered to make sure you drain all the fuel because you only want it to fire for like a second at most. Um, which is you know, basically the minimum that it can fire for. So make sure the bell isn't all the way up into the Sawyer's, in which case it won't actually work. Uh, but uh, just make sure it's sticking out far enough and that it also won't interfere with the decoupling of the Heat shield. So that is basically the top two modules of the Soyuz. So now it is time for the uh, time for the service module, uh, which uh, you have to put a little decoupler down there, and then a Soyuz module. is comes a nice little convenient uh, little service thing right there, which is basically the exact same size as the rear one. So it's going to put some reaction wheels and some fuel tanks in there. You don't need a lot. This thing is for mainly orbital maneuvering, um, so you really don't need a lot of delta V. Maybe a hundred, which is about what we end up getting with it. Um, also, would like to quickly shout out the channel. If you are enjoying the video, you know, this is a great tutorial. If you like it, OMG, so great. There is a subscribe button. OMG, guys. YouTubers do plugs. What? Also have Discord if you want to check that out. Also have some like buttons and their membership, you know? Plugs are over. Great. Quick plugs. I like to do quick plugs. So I'm going to grab some solar panels. Just going to go ahead and check those on. Uh, this is basically, you can put up some other detailing stuff if you want uh, on the side as well. So now I'm going to put an engine plate on and get a little de a little engine there. A spark engine to serve as our, our little orbital maneuvering engine. Along with a nice little launch escape tower, which is pretty important. Uh, to, you know, if you want to evacuate. So, uh, quick little note here. We're going to go and put the fairing down. Uh, I originally forgot to uh, put a decoupler there, but here a little, yay, edit from the future, right? You want to put a decoupler right there. Decoupler, okay, back to normal here. Pretend there's a decoupler there. You need a decoupler or else it won't be able to, you know, decouple. So, going ahead and make a fairing. You want to have to widen it out a little bit. You don't, the thing, real one doesn't really widen, but this is really how you have to do it. It kind of does, but point is, you have to do that, and then you want to make it uh, go ahead. You want little blue uh, enter buttons there for the, uh, when it connects to the launch escape tower. And then, you are going to have to go and make the upper stage of the rocket which I like to use that color for the 1.875 meter. And then there is a, it is a four chamber design for the, uh, for the engine. I just said I go with four terriers and I'm going to put an engine plate on there. And this thing is also encased in an engine skirt or the interstage is basically on the thing. So we also want to get a fairing actually and flip that upside down and get that thing like so. And alt plus left click is what you want to do to uh, make the fairing terminate like that. I've gotten quite a few questions about that in the past. So we're going to do four ways so you're going to go ahead and grab the terriers and put them on like so. Um, those bells are a little bit bigger than the real one, but I really don't know of a better option that you could really use. Um, the terriers are the lowest thrust um, with the smallest bell that you can. I mean, I guess you could use swivels, but they have the little top mount thingy, which kind of get in the way. And I think the terrier is the best option. Like you could maybe use a cheetah, 
but that would have a really high thrust to weight ratio. It'd be kind of unrealistic, but uh, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those on. Then we get some four of the Vernier engines, which are gonna be used for or or for the VEC gimbling. You, uh, I believe the real engine cannot actually gimbal uh, the real uh, engine that goes up there. That's why you need the Vernier engine. So you can disable again the uh, gimbal if you want on the Terrier, just for added realism sake. And just because these engines, the Verniers, are really really loud, you don't need all the gimbal ability. I just turn them down to a 20% thrust limiter on this upper stage, just so it's easier. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the little like girder looking scaff not scaffold, but you know, this this decoupler, because that is uh, what they really use. Uh, you know, realism, right? And then we go ahead and grab another uh, long fuel tank, along with another little tiny fuel tank segment thing to begin the construction of the Core R7 booster. We're gonna go ahead and recolor them. You can really do whatever color you want. They've been a few different colors for the Soyuz. Uh, so yeah, I can really do that. So now we're making the R7 booster, which is basically, you know, it's a booster, right? We all like boosters. We're gonna go ahead and flip that upside down to go ahead and get the, the core part, which actually gets a little bit skinnier towards the bottom part. So we're gonna go ahead and grab a Mark 1 or 1.25 meter fuel tank, get that to the orange color, and then auto strut heavy, auto strut and rigid attach that. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab our Kodiak engine. Go ahead and switch the uh, little thing in the bottom there so you can actually get the one with the little, uh, little shroud kind of thing around it. And then you wanna get our decouplers for our four side boosters, which are basically the signature thingy of the Soyuz. It's what gives the Soyuz its kind of unique look. It has those weird looking, uh, booster things, which is the, R, the R7 booster is what and has that. So I guess it's not really the, it's the distinguishing thing about the R7, not really the Soyuz. But point is, I'm gonna go put those on. I'm gonna put the engines on, and then we're going to lower that down and make sure you have the the version of the Kodiak, which actually can cover the entire thing, like so. So, uh, so, 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 so. Uh, I'm gonna get the height, get the engines matched at the correct and proper height, and then we are going to go ahead and grab the Vernier engines for this uh, stage right here. So the way the Vernier engines are set up here, there are two Vernier engines uh, on each of the boosters, as you will see the arrangement that I will build right now, and then there are four Vernier engines on the center core as well, or uh, yeah, the center core. Uh, I don't actually throttle these all the way up to full either because they are loud and they add a little bit of thrust because this thing is a lot of thrust like the thrust It's definitely there. You can definitely notice this thing. This thing does like to get off the pad I'm trying to escape from Russia apparently <laughs> Mother Russia you not escape. Mother Russia Russia escape from you <laughs> Russia rocket fly you <laughs> Great Russian accent, right? So there, that's the design for the, the, the layout of the Vernier engines over on that side. And then in the core, uh, it is basically just a four-way uh, symmetry type thing that we got going here. Pretty bog standard. Then we have to use the offset tool to move it down towards the down towards the middle area. So it looks nice and good like so. So that is almost the entire rocket completed. It's pretty quick. This thing is I think it's not too hard to, uh, this, was, this is more like, I wouldn't say basic version, but it's like a pretty good version. Um, so, uh, so I'm gonna go 69 throttle limiter on there and then 42 throttle limiter on there. Cause you know, it's fun numbers, right? <laughs> so yeah, like it's not super advanced. Like Gameplay Review UK has made a better one, I think. Um, but this is definitely one that you, everyone can make. Mo I shouldn't say everyone, but most people should be able to make that. I'm doing throttle thrust limiter to 40 on that. So um, it's, a, it's a good all round Soyuz and it looks like like 80, 90% good. You know what I mean? Like there's something that could be a little bit better, you know, if you really wanted to mess with it. But like the things that aren't good are really not intuitive to fix is what I'm trying to say. So uh, like the boosters are a little bit small, but you know, it's hard to fix that. So uh, now we are going to do our staging. So you can really just look at what I do for my staging. I don't really want to like kind of talk through it, but that's what I'm doing for the staging. Make sure you have it all set up right. You got to check your staging, um, which is, you know, pretty important thing. And we're going to go ahead and set it up an action group for the launch escape system, which is going to be something we're doing in just a minute or so. So, 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 a lot of so's this video. So I'm going to make sure to disable uh, staging on that uh, engine, um, the, the, the terrier fairing. Don't stage it, right? Uh, engine skirt, that's the word I'm looking for. So yeah, make sure you don't do that. So uh, that is going to basically uh, get us pretty close to the end of the build time lapse. Um, yeah, like I said, just do the action group and finalize some of the staging stuff um, before we can launch the thing. And we can go ahead and I'll demonstrate a quick little launch and the descent uh, and landing because you can see how that little retro rocket works on the, on the Soyuz. So I'm gonna go ahead and name that Soyuz Tutorial. And then do not look at this. This is wrong. This is wrong. You see how I'm going into stage menu right there? That is in inaccurate. You don't want to do that. Um, I'll demonstrate what you're actually supposed to do in just a second. Um, but this is where we get into quick, quick, a lot of quick phase. Make sure you reverse that um, because the thing is upside down. Because if you don't reverse, you're gonna have all upside down. This is where I want to go. I want to go to act, um, custom one and then uh, activate engine and decouple node. Action, act, act, blah. Action group one. Not, not stage. That will. Be bad. Don't do stage. Welcome to the launch. Hello, everybody. SAS on. 
engines on, throttle all the way up, and it's like a rocket. It flies. Pretty crazy. So, uh, now we're just going to get the time lapse going here. You just, you have to do a normal, pretty standard ascent. What I did at, uh, I throttled the thing down to about two-thirds throttle at five kilometers, just so that we can kind of relax the G-forces. This thing can go really, really fast, so... You know, max Q and all, gotta be, gotta be efficient, right? So, one thing you have to note for the booster separation is you have to be pointing a prograde uh, during booster separation to get a nice good core left cross, which you don't know what the core left cross is. It is... That thing, where the boosters do that cool little pattern thing as they separate. So make sure you're on prograde when you do that, so. Boosters are gone, and now we can continue on up to Orbitissimo. We go do a 100 by 100 km orbit, just a nice standard orbit. The Soyuz can have a lot more delta v. It can probably it can probably get into a low it can go it can get into a low moon orbit or a low minimus orbit or probably even a low duna orbit if it wanted to. Um, so it has enough delta v to basically to do whatever it wants. Not really whatever it wants, but it has like a good thousand delta v. Uh, I, I don't exactly remember the top top of my head, but you, you can just look a little staging thing when you get into into orbit. So. Heading ready to stage away the core stage, and there it goes, Seek Miko, and then second engine start, there it goes, and there you go, the fairing and the launch escape system. So now he's going to basically burn the last 200 meters a second, and then we will get our way uh, in turbo. Let's get a little more than a thousand, so yeah, there's enough delta to go, this. go some places, so. And we can go ahead and cut the engine, and we can glide on up to orbit, and then we can get ready for our re-entry, because that is really all that is left in this video. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get ourselves in orbit. And uh, just a quick little disclaimer here. The audio kind of died um, during our, our re-entry. So, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to hear any of the game audio. Uh, so, no no cool re-entry sounds and no parachute deployment sounds and crap. So, do apologize for that. But, eh, what can you do? Kind of decided to die. So, uh, and yeah, I really didn't want to re-record this whole thing because I'm, I'm recording this video basically as late as possible. C combination of me being lazy and me having to go to bed, like, soon. Or else I'm going to, like, get, like, no sleep tonight. <laughs> okay, we're doing ranch. I feel like I can do a quick little rant here. Not rant, but tangent. Like, there was a time I was getting, like, four or three hours. Four, three, about four hours of sleep. I got two nights in a row. Um, just because of how schedules lined up and me being just all, my sleep schedule being all screwed up. Um, and that basically, and then the third day, like, I could not do it, and I literally slept, like, 14 hours. It was kind of funny. Uh, either way, I feel, yeah. So, here we go. We're going to go ahead and deploy the parachute pretty low, and then we are going to get ready to engage the retro rocket. Um, which we're going to do at around 10 meters above the ground, as you can see, because you want to time it so it finishes the burn right about as you touch the ground. So there's 20, there's 10, and there it goes, and touchdown. That is going to be the Soyuz landed. So... That's going to us to the end of today's video. So here is a picture of all the members. Big thanks to all you guys. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please write or comment to this video. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.